calling Silicon broke. Talks of cost cuts, layoffs, hiring freezes across Wall Street as America braces for a recession, and yet tech giant spending more than ever before. Take Meta. CapEx spending expected to grow nearly 70 percent this year from 2021 and hiring 3,700 new workers last quarter, and yet uh, shares plunging on its earnings miss, down almost 25 percent on the day. Wall Street is screaming, we're not accepting growth at any costs. Why isn't Silicon Valley listening? Let's ask Jim Stewart, New York Times columnist and a CNBC contributor. Do you think that these big growth companies, Jim, are they incapable of belt tightening? Well, they're clearly capable of it. The question is, do they want to or will they? And I think what they really have in common we're seeing now is there's incredible disconnect be between normal market disciplinary forces and these big tech companies because they are, most of them have controlling shareholders who do not need to listen to the marketplace and they don't really even listen to their own boards of directors if they don't want to. And another fascinating thing about them, like a Zuckerberg or a Bezos, they are so rich, even if their stock goes down 25 or 50 percent, that they're not personally particularly affected. I don't know that they care whether they're the richest person in the world or the third richest person in the world. They're still phenomenally rich. So they're living in a world that is disconnected from the average investor, let alone the average person. What you're describing is basically an emperor who looks out at the kingdom that he has built and says, I don't need to listen to my advisors. It, it doesn't matter that I spend profligately. I'm going to continue to do what I think is best in order to grow and retain control of my empire. And you see it happening even outside of this mega cap names. I mean, DraftKings has a founder that also has all the voting <clears throat> power where, where this comes. Are you going to start to see a switch from investors who get spooked by that kind of structure in and of itself, Jim? Well, they've certainly been ignoring it over the last decade when, you know, as long as the stock price was going up, I don't think anyone really cared about it. But I think, yes, there is going to be a renewed for focus on corporate governance and a look at how these people are responding. I mean, I think another big issue that's particularly true of, of Meta, look, the stock is down 24, 25 percent today. And they're, they've done a terrible job of communicating to investors what to expect and also what is the rationale for this spending. I mean, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that they are genuinely acting in what they believe is in the best interest of the company and shareholders. But they have not been able to explain that to the average person. You know, what is but, this? But also, aren't, share, aren't shareholders just in it for the short term? Like, you know, you get all of this pressure quarter after quarter after quarter to show results. When I, I've heard CEOs say, I'm trying to build a long term vision here. How am I going to come up with the next big thing if I don't invest the money in that now? Well, Amazon was kind of the classic example that shareholders let them lose money for decades. And they, but they did a good job of explaining where they were going in the end. And I think others need to follow that lead. I think a lot of investors in these companies are long term. I mean, I know plenty of people who bought in early with Google Alphabet, bought in early with Facebook, hoping it would be their Walmart, you know, that they could you know, hold it for 15 years and retire. And, you know, for a while it looked like, yes, these things were going to pay off. So they're, you know, long term holders have done very well until this year in these companies. And I think shaking that this is now beginning to shake that long term mentality. Sheryl Sandberg left a simple question, Jim. Does Meta have a Zuckerberg problem? Well, I, I don't personally know um, Zuckerberg, but um, I think there is a sense that you need with these. Let's concede, concede that he's, he's a genius. He was brilliant at seeing the potential of Facebook. Is does he have the discipline to run a mega cap? company like this, it would be asking an awful lot for one person to be able to do all of these different tasks, to be both a visionary and a great chief financial officer, for example. So I think investors, they're very reassured at Alphabet, for example, that they have Ruth Porat as the chief financial officer, somebody they know, they trust, Wall Street knows her. She's an adult in the room. Mm -hmm. I don't think Facebook has, now that Cheryl is gone in particular, has a figure with that kind of stature on Wall Street. The question is, Will they get someone like that? Do they have someone like that? And again, if they do, they haven't really done a good job of communicating. This is clearly has always been the Zuckerberg show, and you either go with him or you don't.